Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today, I'm jumping into golf accessories with a rangefinder by Motocaddy. Now Motocaddy, I'm sure you guys are very aware, are usually for golf trolleys, but this Motocaddy Pro 3000 rangefinder, I think is gonna change that. This is a premium product, so it does have a premium price tag, which I'll put on the screen for you now. But with a premium price tag comes a lot of features. Weighing in at 190 grams, which is quite light for a rangefinder, this comes in what I can only say is the perfect size. It fits perfectly in literally everybody's hands, and for, a, let's say, a beginner product, this is the perfect size for it. It's very easy to just get out, put it in your hand, and put it there. This may sound silly, but we've reviewed a lot of rangefinders here, and if they're too big and too small, it becomes just a bit of a hassle to actually use them every single hole. If we focus on the tech side of this rangefinder, it is said to be accurate to 0.5 yards with seven times magnification. It has slope, which is very important, and it also is competition legal if you disable that slope feature. It has up to 1,300 yards in range with 450 yards to an actual flag, and it also has pin lock vibration. Motocaddy offer a 24 month warranty on this product, so you can see they are very confident that this product is durable and will last a long time. And a lovely little feature as well is the travel case with it is very compact and it has a lot of little clips so you can attach to a stand bag, a trolley bag, a car, you name it. Motocaddy have researched this and made sure that this ticks literally every single box. So on paper, you can see this is a premium product. It should be pretty much up there with any single rangefinder in 2021 but how will it actually perform on the course? I'm here at Manning's Heath Golf and Wine Estate. I'm gonna play about four or five holes here at the Kingfisher course. It's very wet. It's a kind of condition where you need a product that will perform well to make sure that you know the exact yardages. So we're gonna put this little range finder through its paces and see if it can perform with the top boys. Let's jump over to the first hole. All right, so a very good start and what is a, uh, although it was dry, this is a really unpleasant day in terms of conditions. This four iron um, span back two foot. Don't really want any spin with a four iron. Um, as I said before, I have used this for about two rounds already, so I'm pretty familiar with this. The biggest positive I've had from it then is that um, the actual size of it is like the perfect size for I think the majority of people's hands. It makes it so easy to just set up. Again, a bit of a weird thing, but I do want to mention all the specifics of this rangefinder. Saying that, so it's saying 147 yards. Now you may think, oh, I'm not so sure about that. The 150s are literally right here. It's not gonna get any sort of roll. So that's gonna be a, uh, a very smooth 9-9 in these conditions. Let's put this back in the travel pouch and see if I can stick one close. Oh, it hung a little bit right. I was trying to draw it around a little bit and it blocked it completely straight, but I think it may just be off the green. You see those things? I'm so good with long irons. When it comes to short irons, I'm absolutely dreadful. I'd be interested to um, hear your guys' thoughts as to um, when you're buying a, a GPS device, whether it's a rangefinder, GPS watch, any of those little things, what, what do you factor in? Because here at Golf Magic, there's so many features that we try and review. As I've said, I'm not gonna mention them right now because I already have, but for an actual consumer, what is that the biggest talking points? Because in my head, I'm thinking it's got to be, it's got to be price. Like it's got to be price. You see some range finders on Amazon, let's say for 60, 70 quid. And if you're looking at that thinking, is that gonna get me the, the same sort of feedback as one that's two, 300 pounds? That in my head, I think is the case. But let me know for all you avid golfers, what is your, uh, what is your biggest talking point when you're looking into a GPS device? If you ever look at my uh, swing and wonder why I'm not off, let's say plus one or plus two, this is exactly why I should not be missing greens by this much in, um, in what, 150 yards or so. Got a mud ball. This again can be fun. Uh, pretty good, I think, that, hopefully. We'll have a look, that should be a gimme. That actually rolled out a lot nicer than I thought. There we go. Oh, punch greens do not make, um, do not make those parts any easier. All right, so par five next. You guys may recognize this from other videos. What I do love about range finders is that I can pinpoint exactly where I do want to hit it. Here, there's got a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a hazard about 220, and I can just make sure exactly where that is. Aha, so I would have, luckily enough, <laughs> uh, been wrong there. It's actually 205. Um, it's 209, but with the slope of the just is a 205. 
That seems pretty straightforward. Now, this gets it at yardage as quick as any other rangefinder I've tried. You've seen in other videos, I've tried a Bushnell, I've tried a shot scope, I've tried a zoom. This, pretty straightforward. And with that vibration feature as well, just want to double check that. Yep, 205 again, it's very accurate. Sometimes I've seen some deviants with some rangefinders. This seems to be pretty much the same the whole time. That's it. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I just ran through the fairway. <laughs> um, I always forget that my yards are different to what I think they are, just because I've gained a bit of distance over the last three months or so. Um, so that six iron there went two oh, or 202. Um, and now, just looking at this second shot, there's no way to really go for it, especially with the lie and the conditions. So it's kind of looking at the best option to lay up. I kind of want to hit it just over there to that third bunker, that's about 177. So if I hit, honestly, that's a bit of a jump of life. So I'm just gonna hit an eight iron. And I think that'll give me a pretty good wedge yardage. With the motor caddy uh, range finder, it does feel almost second nature after you get used to it. There's been a few range finders that I've used that just because the size feels a little bit funny, it does take a while, but the actual simplicity of the motor caddy especially for situations like this, just zapping an actual point rather than the flag, it makes it quite an easy process. Now, I've said in other videos, I am more of a, um, I'm more of a watchman, but in the last year or so, I've kind of become a bit more of like a hybrid and using both for certain situations. Just swam it around. Yep, got that, that ball craters into the fairway. <laughs> I think in, um, in winter months, using a range finder over, let's say a GPS watch, is preferable because you do know in the winter that when you let's say zoom in on a target whatever you zoom in on it's going to land literally straight there in the summer you can zoom in on something and think okay it's going to carry there with a seven iron but with how hard the fairways are that can run an extra 10 15 yards or so i always used to think that the flexibility of gps watches because there are so many different features you can have for smart watches make them a superior product but when you're actually looking at it from a golf perspective for example, why do all PGA Tour players, when they can in practice rounds, why do they have rangefinders in their bags and not watches? Makes you think. Okay, so hopefully we're gonna have a chance of birdie here. This is where this motor caddy will come into its own because I can get the exact yardage to this flag. So it's telling me 118. I'm gonna look at where the 150s are to see if that's correct. That looks about right. I always second guess it. Yep, 118 again, one more. Yeah, 117, actual 112 with the slope. So again, that's three times that I've zoomed this in, exact same yardage, two or minus what, half a yard. So pretty bang on there. This is where rangefinders are so useful, because as I've said, I've got that 117. Other things, you're not really gonna be too sure as to the exact yardage to the nearest yard. This becomes incredibly useful when you are aware of how far you hit every single club. I. Uh, recommend every single person watching this video, go to a track man, go to somewhere that can give you data and find out how far you hit your wedges, not just your full swings, your half swings, your shoulder swings. Because then when you do this, you're thinking, for instance, okay, my sand wedge goes 120, but I don't want to hit a full one. My gap wedge goes about 130, 132. I'd rather hit a smooth one, probably shoulder to shoulder and see where it goes. Because that way, if I hit a full sand wedge, I am at risk of, have, let's say, having a bad strike in these bad conditions. So. That's what I've thought, and that's all with the help of the Motor Caddy Pro 3000 rangefinder. Uh, it's a shame. Again, similar to my 9-iron that I blocked that. It's still going to be on the green, but you probably saw on the swing there, it just came out a little bit right. Those bobbles. Dear, dear. It's a good part. I don't know how I could get a mud ball while putting, but <laughs> it's a good part. Oh, crept in. <laughs> Another par. Okay, so our first and only par three of this session is not a long one. I'll show you some drone footage just of it here. It doesn't play too long. I usually think it plays between around, I think it's about 160 to 170 yards, but let me use this motor caddy rangefinder. And so it's coming in at 175 yards. Yep, just doing it three times. Yeah, so that was really impressive there. That was 175 yards every single time in the three tests. With slope, it's also 175. So I'm in between clubs, which is great, but I'm probably gonna hit uh, yeah, a seven and see if I can get it there. I 
think it's slightly into wind by about three miles an hour, but I'm not gonna hit a six because I know it's gonna go absolutely miles if I do that. So let's try and get a seven there. I know I can, let's give it a go. Oh, I think it's gonna be short because how badly I struck it, but it's right at it. Yeah, just on the front, that's a shame. Oh, those, that was literally the perfect shot. <laughs> Again, the greens being punched just slowed that down so quickly. Well, I can't give myself that. The last hole of the day for us, we think it's a 440 yard par four that plays downhill after the tee shot, but it's slightly into the wind today, so it's gonna play long. I'm just trying to see how far away it actually is. Okay, so I'm gonna aim, so I always do the left side of the fairway with a two iron. It's gonna go down the hill and it should be pretty much A1, but it's still gonna be quite a long second shot. Oh yeah, best shot of the day, save it to the last hole. Well, I nearly missed that. <laughs> okay, okay, this is a really fun shot and where this little thing here, this Motocaddy rangefinder will help me out a lot like it has done over the last three holes. If you can't see, <laughs> this is a very steep downhill. And I always actually wonder how far down how it is. I've never actually done this hole with a rangefinder, so it'll be interesting to see what the actual yardage is. Um, so, so it's telling me here it's 184 with the actual yardage 168, which you can see at the uh, 150 just down there. That is pretty much exactly what I would think it would be. I always thought it'd be more downhill with the slope though, so. Yeah, so that's saying again, 169. I um, don't want to go long, because that pin is actually a back pin. So I'm going to try and knuckle an eight with all this, uh, all this adrenaline I have. So that means even if I go a little bit short, um, I should be on the green. I think it's going to be short. Ooh, I think may maybe short just on the center of the green. Good shot, just didn't go as much as I thought I would. That was actually a really good shot from where I was, considering what, 184 adjusted to 167, giving myself about 25 to 30 foot. Um, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, with these punch greens just there, um, I don't really want to three putt again on camera. <laughs> so let's give now my final thoughts on the Motocaddy Pro 3000 rangefinder. So guys, that brings me to the end of this video and the end of the review for the Motocaddy Pro 3000 rangefinder. As you can tell, I'm a big, big fan. For the four holes, I went one over. I'm gonna get a little asterisk there just because the greens were just punched. But as you can see from my tee to green, I think that's the best it may have ever been on this channel. I didn't really miss a fairway. And if I did, it was just down to me just getting a bit of course management wrong on the second hole. So you could see that this came in handy a lot. But where would I position this Motor Caddy rangefinder with all the other ones we've tested? Well, at a premium price tag, it should be right there at the top. And I do really think this rivals Bushnell for those premium rangefinders. That may be a bit tough to take in for people who have used Bushnell rangefinders for a lot of years, but I'm not too surprised by that. That's because if you've used a, a brand for a long time, you're gonna have brand equity. You're gonna absolutely love everything they do. Motor Caddy, a lot of people love all the trolleys, including us here at Golf Magic. Then branching out into other categories of the golf industry, I think it will take a while for them to really position themselves in other categories, which is what happens in golf. But when they produce superior products like this rangefinder right here, they're going to be here to stay for quite a long time. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today here at Manning's Heath on a fairly pleasant but also very muddy wintry day here in November in the UK. If you guys are new to the Golf Magic YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all of our videos. I will see you at the next one.